My view on leadership derives from Bertrand Russell, who said that only fools think they're always right. A wise person is always asking where they're wrong. And that, for me, is the most critical thing about leadership. Leadership and leaders need to have enough confidence in themselves to foster the environment where they are always questioned. My name's Andrew McLeod and I'm an Australian. I spent many years in the 1990s working in some of the world's most dodgy parts. Yugoslavia, Rwanda and countries ending in Stan that don't have an up-to-date lonely planet. And from those experiences I've drawn many lessons on leadership. I moved from the non-for-profit sector in the 2000s into the corporate world and discovered that the only way to sustainably bring people out of poverty is through employment and employment can only be guaranteed if you have profitability. So what I speak on and what I like to teach people is this interface between corporate and community and improving profitability and improving community outcomes at the same time. My leadership speeches concentrate on six or seven key lessons learned from the Pakistan earthquake response or the Rwandan genocide and apply these lessons not only to the non-for-profit world but to the for-profit world. Great lessons in life. In the Pakistan earthquake relief, let me tell you what we were faced with. In 90 seconds, a magnitude 7.6 earthquake destroyed half a million homes, made 3.5 million people homeless. 8,000 kilometres of roads were destroyed, 800 hospitals and schools. 75,000 people were killed, 140,000 people injured. Six weeks before, a Himalayan winter was about to dump 20 feet of snow on top of all of these people. There is a great challenge happening in the world today as companies move into more and more countries, into cultures that are different from their own. And the great challenge for many of our senior management is how do we adjust the footprint of our corporations in these very different communities and very different cultures? The challenge is to maintain profitability over the long term. And it's in the business interest of many companies to help communities develop so they can become the marketplace, but also the employee marketplace for the future. And the challenge for many of our senior executives is to step out of what they know. So how do we train them? How do we coach them? How do we bring people on board in this journey that a corporation needs to as a corporation expands? Leadership is not about being right or being seen to be right. Leadership is about listening. Leadership is about bringing people in the right way for the right team. I thank you for your time in listening to me. Given me the experience of highs that normal people don't have and lows that normal people don't have. How would you feel walking into a church in Yatarama in Rwanda with three and a half thousand human corpses at your feet and a baby's head on top staring at you and asking, why did you let this happen? So let's start off with a small issue for the beginning of a Saturday, and that is bringing the world out of poverty. Is development aid working? Facilitation is an important task. And sometimes it is important for senior management teams to bring in external people. And external people can bring out from each of the leaders you have around a table issues and challenges that perhaps they're a bit quiet or a bit reluctant to bring in an internal only meeting. When I facilitate senior meetings, I make sure that we bring everyone's idea onto the table so all executives can look at these ideas and decide which is the best way forward. Well, analyst Andrew McLeod has worked with the UN and the Centre for Strategic International Studies. Andrew, is this super agency a super idea or not? Look, I don't think the agency makes any difference at all to whether we're solving the problem. The current policy is, in many ways, putting a band-aid over the wound, but it's not dealing with the wound. One of the greatest challenges facing human resources managers today is retention and recruitment of high-quality staff. How do you motivate your new graduates? How do you motivate your mid-level managers to stay in your company for the long term? How do you save those retraining and re-recruitment costs? Well, one is to motivate your own teams about the social outcomes as well as the financial outcomes that your corporation is doing in its day-to-day -day core profitable business. One of the services I can offer your teams is to give them a broader exposure to global events and show them how their day-to-day -day work is actually doing good and why it is they should stay in the company that they currently are.